Hi, I'm Glenn Aaron here for Zolotech, and today Apple released iOS 18.2 RC2, or Release Candidate 2. iOS 18.2 RC2 is available to developers and public beta testers as well. It's a bit of a surprise that we got this and we did not get iOS 18.2's public release, but we'll talk more about that a little bit later iOS 18.2 RC2 is supported on all iOS 18 devices and has some bug fixes and updates here as well. Now this update came in at 469.8 megabytes on my iPhone 16 Pro Max and was about the same size on the other devices here, where we also had other releases with iPadOS 18.2 RC2, macOS 15.2 RC2, tvOS and HomePod OS 18.2 RC2, VisionOS 2.2 RC2, but no watchOS 11.2 RC2. So maybe there was no issues they needed to fix. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the build number and talk about what's new. So we'll go into settings, then we'll go to general, then about. As you can see, the build number is 22C151. We're just one number up from the previous build, and this update is probably released to fix a bunch of issues we were still having with iOS 18.2 RC. Apple will typically release an RC2 to fix additional issues. So as far as new features, well, I didn't really see anything specific that was new, but there are a bunch of bug fixes to talk about. So we still have all the same features we had before. So on the latest phones, we have Apple Intelligence, of course, with updates with Image Playground, I've shown that before, as well as Visual Intelligence on the iPhone 16 series. We have additions with Genmoji and more. Writing Tools is also included in that. But we also get a bunch of other features, such as in settings. If we go back to settings, we have new dark mode icons. Even if you're in light mode, you'll see that on the iPhone 11 as well. Again, it carries across to all devices and you'll see it's filling in here as I just installed the update, but we have the same sort of update throughout. We have features throughout and changes some natural voice languages for Siri options and music and TV and updates in podcasts and many other changes. This actually has more features and changes than just Apple intelligence. There's a lot more features and changes throughout all the older phones as well. Now, as far as a few different things I wanted to mention here is this installed extremely fast, no issues there. When I installed it the first time, not only did it download quickly and that's dependent on your internet connection, but it installed very fast. I don't think I've seen that before, at least this fast on one of these updates. As far as battery intelligence, there's no sign of that. As many people have been asking, have they added that feature? So if you plug this in battery intelligence basically just refers to it telling us how much time there is until it's charged. This isn't really anything new. We've seen this on other phones and other devices such as the Mac, but for whatever reason, it's not on the iPhone and it's still not on the iPhone from what I can see. Within wallpaper, they still did not return the wallpaper for the iPhone 15 Pro series for whatever reason. So it looks like that's gone permanently at this point. Maybe they're not going to return it and you'll see it's still a little bit buggy. As I switch to dark mode, it has to fill everything back in. So for whatever reason, they haven't done that. Another thing I wanted to check had to do with settings under apps. I was looking to see if we could maybe finally install third party app stores in the United States. While we can sort of install them, we can put them on the device, but it won't allow us to install and use them. So we do get the menu options for it. And if we go here, you'll see the alt store. So if we go to alt, you'll see it here, but I still can't download and install it. So maybe they'll unlock this eventually, but it's still not here, at least in the United States. Now, of course, we do have security updates with this update and lots of bug fixes. The security updates will actually show up a little bit later once this is available to the public. But as far as bug fixes, well, on the public facing release notes website, we have quite a few things with accessibility. For example, if you use the ignore trackpad settings, it will be reset after updating to iOS 18.2. They've fixed this. They've fixed some issues with AV foundation, resolved some issues with chat GPT for devices with MDM profiles. Users with anonymous restrictions are unable to sign out. They also fixed requests to generate images with chat GPT and writing tools where it could fail. They resolved issues with Find My, where playing a sound and precision finding features of AirTags, AirPods, and third-party Find My enabled accessories might not work. There's also some issues with Genmoji that are still remaining, even in the RC2 version, where a personalized Genmoji might not generate without selecting a different person first. It says in the People Selector screen, select a different person, then reselect the original person. Why that's still a bug, I'm not sure, but it's still here. They fixed issues with mail, recategorizing an email from a domain with a high number of messages where it might cause unexpected grouping behavior. 
Messages is fixed where messages might not appear in the messages app. And they's, they've also resolved the stickers issue. So stickers wouldn't appear and that's now showing up properly. They've resolved issues with Swift UI. There's still known issues with UI kit and UI writing tools coordinator, but in general, they've fixed a lot of different things. The main one I think is probably the stickers showing up. If we go into messages within messages under stickers, as long as you have those enabled, they seem to be filling in properly and showing up. If you've used Genmoji, you have to have stickers enabled in order to use those. You'll see them down here as well. So it looks like they've fixed a lot of issues. A couple things they haven't mentioned that seem like they're fixed is touch issues and improved battery. We saw this over the weekend with the follow-up as it's the best ever so far, as far as iOS 18.2's battery and stability and usability. So it seems like it's a pretty solid release. Now, as far as iOS 18.2's public release, well, we were expecting it today, but we could see it sometime this week. We could see it as soon as tomorrow. I don't think they'll push it to the 16th, but that's very possible. I think it'll be later this week, but Apple hasn't specified which day. Then we'll move on to iOS 18.3 betas with iOS 18.3 beta one. We'll probably have a break for a while over the holidays with Christmas and New Year's and probably in the second or third week of January, we'll see beta two. That's typically what they do every year. As far as performance overall, well, I've been using the RC one version over the weekend, and it seems to be quite fast. The only thing I've noticed is on older phones with the iPhone 11, for example, the first time you opened it, it would stutter when you close the app. However, with RC two, I'm not seeing that here so far. If we go into the camera, maybe go into photos, take a photo, swipe home. You'll see maybe there was a little bit of stutter on both, but in general, it seems to be very smooth, including ProMotion and just scrolling in general, even on the older phones, everything seems to be nice and smooth. And I think this is a great update. We don't know exactly if they fixed anything with performance, but heat seems to be better as well. Even after installing this update, the phone stayed nice and cool, and I've had no issues with that whatsoever. So it seems to be quite good as far as that goes. When it comes to the overall battery, well, over the weekend, battery life was pretty good. It seemed like it was improving. So if we take a look at battery, battery health, I have 71 cycles with 100% capacity and the overall usability you'll see over the past few days here has been okay. So you'll see, I didn't use it a whole lot over the past two days, but on Friday I had five hours and 11 minutes of screen active time and used about 75% of my battery. This is much better than what we had before. As you can see, when I use similar amounts of my battery, I only had three hours and 41 minutes of screen active time. So it's definitely improving with this update. If you're wondering if you should install iOS 18.2 RC2, if you're on RC1, definitely install it. See if it resolves any issues that you may have been having, but many people did not report any issues whatsoever. Also, if you're on iOS 18.1.1 and want to try this out, this would probably be fine as it's available to public beta testers as well and seems to be a very stable update. When it comes to the overall benchmarks, well, they're still holding true to what we had on the weekend with the best ever. So if we go into Geekbench 6, CPU history, I even have better scores on the iPhone 11, but on the iPhone 16 Pro Max, it's well within the margin of error. You can see from today, I ran it twice, then I ran it the other day with RC1, and it's well within that margin of error, 8,663 compared to 8,695. If I give it a little time, it will probably improve. But it was even better, like I said, on the iPhone 11 than ever before. 4,230 for multi-core, and last time was 4,220 was the highest. So it seems to be doing quite well. So that's everything so far with iOS 18.2 RC2. I'm surprised Apple released it, but I'm glad they're sort of refining things before the public release. Let me know if you've found anything else though I haven't mentioned in the comments below. And of course, I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.